So in this video, we're gonna be going over five money habits that may be holding you back from a really good financial future. So the first one, it's something that's quite common and it's waiting until the end of your pay period to see how much you can save. So it may sound like a simple one, but essentially waiting till the end of your pay period, whether that's fortnightly or monthly, whatever it is, and then seeing how much you can save is not the best way to go about it. As we all know, things come up during the month, during the weeks that you end up spending money on, and you'll very often likely find that you have nothing left at the end of the month, unless you're being very conscious about your spending. So you may have heard the term pay yourself first, so that's essentially what we're trying to do here. And the way you can do this is essentially by doing a budget. So I'll actually leave a free template down in the comment section below where you can just download one of these budgets for free, of course. And then you can basically enter all your different expenses in terms of your guaranteed expenses, maybe your rent or your mortgage, maybe you have things like your car payment, etc. Everything that you know are gonna be your fixed expenses. And feel free to add in here, like for example, your weekly spending, maybe you know you spend 50 a week, 70 a week, 100 a week, whatever you decide to spend, put that in there in that as well, just to account for some variable income as well as your fixed expenses. And of course, this works best if you have a kind of guaranteed income. Obviously, you can still do this if you have a variable income that changes quite a bit, but I guess for most of us, we have a guaranteed income, whether that's weekly, fortnightly, or monthly. So then essentially put in what you earn, subtract these expenses, and then see what is ever is left over. And let's say, for example, we have 500 euro left over at the end of the month. What we can decide to do is maybe put 250 of that aside into your savings, and maybe keep the other 250 just in case something does come up. Someone's birthday, you need to go out for an unexpected dinner, things like that, it's always good to have a buffer. And of course, there will be scenarios where people, when they do this, will realize that you know they don't have anything left over or they have very little left over. What I would say is if you do have very little left over, it's just good to get into the habit of saving. So even if it's something like just saving five euro a week or something like that, sounds minuscule, but it will start to add up over time. For example, if you put five euro away a week for the full 52 weeks of the year, you'll end up with around 260 euro. So as the years go on, you will start to build that up. And I'm just talking worst case, even if you think that that's not worth saving, or investing, make sure you do still put that aside to get into a habit of it. And then hopefully maybe as you get more skilled in your field or whatever and you can start to earn more income, that then you can start to up that as well. Another reason why this doesn't work so well towards the end of the pay period is, for example, let's say you have 800 euro left over in your account at the end of the month and you're looking to buy a new pair of shoes that maybe you don't exactly need, they cost around 100. If you look at your account and you have 800 in there, you're more likely to spend that 100. But if you've already put aside your savings of two, 300, you'll only have maybe four or 500 left in there and you may not be as likely to spend that money on that pair of shoes. Now, of course, treat yourself where it deserved all of that as well, but we're kind of talking about avoiding unnecessary expenditure here. And as I said, the more money you have at the end of the month, you're more likely to actually spend that. So try to save and pay yourself first, as it were, uh, towards the start of the pay period. So the next one then is not tackling high interest debt. I've seen a lot of scenarios where people have car loans, maybe home improvement loans, for example, and this could be at seven, eight, nine percent or even higher. And people, instead of paying them loans off or in the first case, trying to just save the money or trying to invest the money, especially with investing, there's not much point risking your money for a non-guaranteed return of, let's say if you're lucky, 7% a year, when you know you could actually get guaranteed results by paying off those loans if they were at seven, eight or 9%. And of course, I'm not talking about mortgages in this case because they're generally very big loans. So I'm not trying to say prioritize paying off a mortgage before you've saved and invested and all that. I'm more talking about kind of smaller amounts of the loans that have high interest rates. So of course it's advised that everybody would have an emergency fund, whatever that is for your specific situation. So something like maybe a thousand euro at the minimum, maybe all the way up to 5,000. So obviously that's good to have in place if something goes wrong. So kind of once that's in place, then myself anyway, I would start to prioritize paying down high interest debt opposed to trying to invest that money or save that money. Only exception to this is probably a technique called the snowball technique, where essentially you would pay off the lowest amount first. So regardless of the interest rate, but you would just tackle the lowest amount loans first. And this is essentially a bit of a psychological trick to get you used to the idea of paying off loans and getting that kind of satisfaction of reducing the amount of loans that you have. So if you have maybe a car loan for 2,000 and a home improvement loan for 10,000, you tackle that car loan first, get that paid off, all of a sudden then you're just left with that 10,000 home improvement loan. And instead of trying to tackle two, paying off two loans, you just tackle that one loan then. So um, that's a good psychological way to do, it, which is kind of done regardless of interest rate. But either way, it's a good idea to tackle high interest, uh, high interest loans in the first instance before maybe trying to invest or save. So the next one then maybe keeping you back from a bright financial future is lifestyle inflation. And this one can just creep up on people. You may get you know an increase in your salary at work or whatever. All of a sudden you want the new phone every year. You want a brand new car when you don't really need one. 
just basically increasing your lifestyle needs where you actually don't don't have those needs essentially. Increasing your lifestyle wants is probably a better way to describe it. Or otherwise known as keeping up with the Joneses. So it's just to be conscious of things. Do I need you know the, the latest and greatest of everything? Maybe I can skip a year with the new iPhone or skip two years with the new iPhone um, and just kind of stay within your means. And of course, as I said previously, treat yourself where it's deserved and all of that. And you know, I'm not a, a fan of not spending any money or anything like that, but where you can kind of make those adjustments and maybe be a bit more frivolous with the spending to avoid that lifestyle inflation. The next one, and it's probably the biggest one I would say, is neglecting your pension. So I've definitely heard from a lot of people, I'll start my pension soon, I'm too young to worry about that, or I just want to live my life for now and not worry about my pension. But honestly, it is quite a mistake to just neglect your pension. Now there are instances where you can make up for it in later years by increasing your contributions and you get more tax relief uh, the older you are, in Ireland anyway, but it always makes sense to do it from a young age, if feasible of course. I'm not saying, you know, max out your pension contributions and then you won't be able to buy a house in the meantime or anything, because we do need to remember that your pension is for retirement, not for uh, the kind of life in between there I guess. But especially in scenarios where an employer contribution is on the table, so maybe if you do 4%, your employer will give 4% as well, or some similar situations, a lot of employers do that. If that's on the table and you're leaving that there, you're, you're essentially just leaving a 4% increase in your salary off the table, you don't want it. So it's really important to at least consider your pension options, at least understand what's available in your company or your situation. Um, you know, in the, in the very least, you should be able to start a PRSA, which is a personal retirement savings account. And that's where you can just put your own contributions in there and get the tax relief based on your income. But as I said, most employers, or a lot of employers anyway, will offer employee contributions where they give you some or maybe match or in some cases double your contribution. So it really makes sense to at least make yourself aware of that. Try start it as early as you can, but obviously make sure that you have a fine balance between not putting too much in your pension and having enough to live your life in the meantime. Because as I said, you do have to wait for retirement for that. But honestly, a pension is one of the best ways to invest your money in Ireland because of all that tax-free returns. And I will be making another video soon that goes a little bit more in depth on pensions and the benefits of them. So the last one then is financial knowledge and I guess financial literacy. And I know a lot of people are kind of daunted by the fact of taxes and learning about different schemes and all, but essentially if you know what's available to you, it can really go a long way. If we take the example of maybe the help to buy scheme in Ireland, which is a, a scheme that can give you up to 30,000 or 10% of the purchase price of a property back to you. So it can basically replace your deposit in some instances. Now there are stipulations involved with that, but that's kind of where I'm getting at here to familiarize yourself with that. And you know, you could go from a position of maybe I'm not sure will I be able to buy a house to maybe being able to get on the property ladder just by being aware of the scheme. And then we have things of course like knowing your capital gains uh, tax-free exemptions of for example 1,270 euro profit every year. So it's kind of like I don't want to overwhelm you with things now but essentially just making yourself familiar with kind of the financial laws and regulations that could be of benefit to you and just kind of reduce that barrier to just I, instead of just saying I don't know anything about it to start to learn a bit more. One thing I see is a lot of people just accept loans from maybe their local bank or whatever provider they're with instead of just shopping around and kind of if you increase your financial literacy here it could really go a long way in terms of giving you a bright financial future. You don't have to be an expert of course but, but even if it's something like immersing yourself in YouTube or financial TikTok and of course be careful who you're listening to and where you get your advice but just kind of putting yourself in those situations where you'll start to hear more kind of about financial techniques and kind of different laws and different government schemes. If you're just putting yourself in that world you'll start to obviously absorb some knowledge that way as well. So those are my five money habits that are possibly keeping you poor, keeping you back from a bright financial future. I'd love to know if you have any more, drop them in the comment section below. If you did like this video, make sure you do drop a like on it as well. And of course, stay tuned for more videos by subscribing to the channel as well.